a lot of things that are not normal for even a very strong hurricane. Uh, the potential and the forecast of a Category 4 raking the coast from West Palm Beach all the way to Jacksonville, Florida is, is unheard of. We never had a forecast like that. That's why we had such dire forecasts all day long today. Now that we're getting closer to the event, we actually think the hurricane force winds will begin on shore here in the next three to four hours. This is when the slightest little shifts make a huge difference. And let me try to point that out to you because we have had some of those shifts. Please. So the, the, the latest forecast path from the hurricane center shown here on this map, that's the red line. A little earlier today, it was a little bit closer to the Melbourne area, and now it has shifted a little bit further off the coast. You'd think, big deal, what, 10, 15 miles? It makes a huge difference to the amount of damage that we're going to get in those areas. If we still take a little path, a little more off the coast, this goes from the historic, cross that off, bring it down to major, maybe moderate type damage from a hurricane. If it goes a little further inland, then we're still talking historic. And this is what really, you know, the forecasters that are watching this, including myself, this is the eye of the hurricane right here. Notice this little black squiggly line? That's the past the path of the storm. That's where it has traveled. The eye. We're tracking it every hour now, putting a little pin on a map, and then we kind of draw the line and connect it. And look at these wobbles. It took a wobble to the northeast, wobble to the west. It just took a wobble to the north. And all of these little wobbles, you try to look, is, is that a, a motion that's going to affect where the landfall is going to be? Or is this greater outer cone here, this greater outer wall, is that what we're tracking? The highest winds we know for sure from the hurricane hunters are in this. That's the eye wall right there. If you go through that, that's where you could get Category 4 winds. So where we bring that on shore is going to be very key to the forecast. But all these little wobbles make a huge difference between a landfall in Fort Pierce or a landfall in Cape Canaveral. And if the landfall is to your north, the forecast is better for you. In Fort Lauderdale, this storm is not half as bad as what you were possibly looking at early this morning. So that's great news for you. In West Palm Beach, when you see these little jogs like that to the north, you're cheering and you're saying, that's fantastic fantastic for us, all the people that evacuated, the hundreds of thousands of people in this area, you like to see these little jogs away from you. Obviously, we still have a lot of concerns up the coast, but if we can clear more of our highly populated cities to the south, that's billions of dollars of damage that will not occur. So let's take a look at where we're dealing with over here. This is the current wind field, and this will be key as we go throughout the overnight hours. This orange is the tropical storm force winds. That is now on shore. We saw that when the Indian Atlantic beats the Melbourne area right up through about four piers. This is where the damage will occur. When this orange, the hurricane force winds, move on shore. That is the key to the forecast. So let's track that. This is one of our latest computer models, and this comes out every three hours. That's the eye. This is 10 p.m. this evening. The white is the hurricane force winds. When you get into that, that's when you start getting a lot of significant damage, widespread power outages, stuff like that. So we track that at 10 p.m. this evening, and then we move it up the coast. Close to a landfall about 1 a.m. in the morning, so a couple of four to five hours from now, right over the top, this model says between Jupiter and Palm City, that would have the worst of the high winds up around the Fort Pierce area, heading towards Sebastian, up 95 here. Then as we go through the overnight hours, we track the eye potentially right up the coast, the Melbourne area, where we just saw Ron, uh, where we just saw Craig, is right in the Indian Atlantic area, right here towards the Melbourne area, Cocoa Beach. 5 a.m. in the morning is when the winds will be howling the worst for you. Up the coast we track it. Again, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, that's Daytona Beach time. So again, because you see, it just makes such a fine difference. Because it, like that computer model I just showed you, Maybe right. Right. It may shift a little bit between now and then. If so, it's, so oh. give me best case, worst case in terms of what that trajectory is, or where it hits, at what strength. Um, right now, if that model came true we would get the historic, the catastrophic wind damage and storm surge from about Melbourne Cocoa Beach northwards. Okay. And that's if that comes true. Now these models are updating every three hours, and I'll get another update of that coming in. And that could be a little further off the coast, because that's taking into account all these little jogs that we're getting, because the hurricane hunters are flying through it. They give us that position. They tell us right where it is, the Latin lawn. That information gets fed into the weather computers, and if it changes there, they don't spit out a different solution there. So it's such a fine line between historic. Let me, let me ask you this. I think part of what I think makes this uh, strange, right, if you've, yeah. if you've covered hurricanes and watched hurricanes, is this sort of brushing the coast trajectory. I think the thing we all learn is they gather their energy over the water, they hit land, it dissipates it. What does it do? How long can a hurricane sustain at the category that it's at at four or three if it's moving up that coast like that? As long as the water is very warm and the winds up high where the jets fly aren't shearing off the tops of the thunder, Storms, it can survive infinitely, but the water will get cooler, and those winds are supposed to increase and shear off the tops of this uh, hurricane a little bit by the time it gets towards Jacksonville. That's why the Hurricane Center weakens it down to a Category 3. It is so much easier to forecast a hurricane that's hitting a coast like a T. 
Right. The ones that are coming up along the coast, this is like, it's the hardest forecast. You have to prepare for the worst, which we have done. I mean, this is a category four. I mean, right. this is, you know, this is as bad as it gets. And if it happens to go a little more off the coast all night tonight, and we don't get that historic or catastrophic damage, I'll be more than happy to take people's calls and say it wasn't Finger, that bad. Fingers crossed. Bill Cairns, thank you for that. Um, joining me now by phone from Weston, Florida, near Fort Lauderdale, is Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, representing parts of Fort Lauderdale and Miami Beach. And Congresswoman, how are folks in your area doing? Well, we're, uh, we're in the midst of the tropical storm forced winds that uh, you guys were just talking about. We, uh, we have pretty heavy gusts here. I, I uh, you know, let Weston, which is my hometown, is um, inland from the coast, uh, about 20 miles uh, just along the Everglades. And, you know, it is, uh, it is pretty significant wind, but not nearly as bad as hurricane force. And so our area is, uh, is, is not, it looks like, going to be hit directly by the, the, the hurricane force winds, but it, was, it is and has been and continues to be an important preparation event because we do have, since we've not had a hurricane hit Florida in over 10 years, Chris, we have millions of people who live here now, plus the tourists that visit here, who have not experienced a hurricane, or, and certainly not a hurricane of this magnitude. And so making sure that people prepared and are ready, I mean, I'm sitting in my hurricane shuttered home, you know, we have our 72 hours of, uh, of supplies because that's critical for the aftermath of a storm. And the other thing that we're all worrying about is right now the forecast track potentially could have it circle back around and hit us again. And so making sure that we are keeping our eye on this is really, really critical. Since I have you on the phone, uh, Congressman, and I know that, that politics are not front of mind for anyone on that coast at this moment no. uh, because right. of the catastrophe, but there is, of course, uh, the election. There are uh, questions about voter registration. If you have massive millions of people moving around, possibly areas that they can't get back to, uh, there was a request put in from the Clinton campaign for the voter registration deadline to be extended. My understanding is the governor, Rick Scott, has said he will not be extending that deadline, and I wondered if you had a response to that. Well, I'll be sending a letter signed by many members of the delegation whose districts have been uh, experiencing and will have felt the full force of the magnitude of Hurricane Matthew tomorrow morning, formally asking him to extend that voter registration deadline. The deadline is this Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, clearly, the responsible and essential thing to do is we have people who have been expecting to have a few extra days uh, before that deadline to register to vote. Uh, that, that's, one of the, that's the most fundamental right we have is to be able to register and cast our ballot to select our leaders. And you know, I certainly hope Governor Scott will, when he gets a formal request from representatives uh, from the state of Florida representing these areas, that he'll reconsider because it's, there's certainly precedent for it and there's a, it's absolutely critical that people have the ability to register to vote and make sure they can cast their ballot. This is an extremely consequential election. All we're asking, uh, and my letter will ask him to extend the deadline to next Friday, uh, that, that is certainly doable and won't make anything, you know, won't provide any additional right. hardship for our supervisors of elections. Uh, and. I, I will be following up with Governor Scott after that letter goes out to him. All right, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Stay with us as we continue to monitor Hurricane Matthew.